90% never fucking happens. There's no company out there with 90% OEE unless they're pencil -wing. Why do I need to digitally transform? And at the end of the day, the answer is really quite simple. It's just so you can stay in business. Like, I mean, that's just the, that's the, ba the base, the baseline is if you're not a digital company, you, you, I mean, it, let's, if you're not digital in 2030, you're not, you won't even exist. We won't even be talking about you. Okay. Uh, if you're not digital today, it's going to be really hard to catch up. Like if you don't already have your digital strategy, you're pretty much in a lot of trouble. Okay. Um, one of the things that we talk about, we have this digital transformation maturity assessment. We look at digital maturity of companies. And I know that HiveMQ does the exact same thing. When you guys go in and take a look at an organization, you're trying to gauge the maturity level of that organization in terms of digital, right? Do they have the right strategy, the right leadership, the right mentality? Do they have the IT infrastructure, right? You know, the whole, the whole deal. The most mature company on the planet for the last six years has been Tesla. Okay, Tesla is about four percentage, four percentage points higher. Their score is an 86 out of 100 on the digital transformation maturity scale. That's out of 1,380 something companies globally in our data set. The, the next closest company is four points behind them at 82. The next closest company after that is in the low 70s. The next lowest, the next closest company after that is in the 60s. And then everyone else is cl clustered in the mid fifties, if you look at that bell curve. Okay. And people will ask me, you know, how can you say that about Tesla? And what I'm going to play in this video here, I'm going to play a clip that's going to prove my point. Okay. Um, this is from Tom Zhu, who is the, okay. Tesla's not very good at job titles, but in a nutshell, he's second in command at Tesla. He was in charge. He was basically CEO of Tesla China. And now he's in charge of all uh, manufacturing and sales in North America and Canada. He's going to be, you know, doing Giga Mexico and all that stuff. I'm going to play this audio clip and then we're going to talk about here's why you have to digitally transform because you're competing against companies who can achieve this. Okay, here we go. So um, what it takes to ramp a Giga factory? Well, if you have a 600 robots, 10,000 trained employees or 5,000 human and 5,000 um, Optimus and hundreds of processes, you can do it. Sounds simple, but it's extremely hard. So there's two um, key metrics that we predominantly focus on. It is an um, overall equipment effectiveness and the cycle time. Um, in Tesla, um, we're setting the passing grade for our vehicle factories um, with 90% OEE and 45 second cycle time. All right, I'm gonna stop right there, okay. In case you couldn't hear, Tom Zhu said, that they are setting their target, acceptable overall equipment effectiveness at 90%, okay? Okay. Like 90%, a real 90%. 90% <laughs> never fucking happens. There's no company out there with 90% OEE unless they're pencil whipping it, <laughs> okay? When you implement, I mean, all the MES people who are on here right now know that when you deploy a digital MES system, most companies find out that their OEE is somewhere in the 30s to 40s. That one of the first things they learn is that they're in the 30 to 40% OEE range. And it, oftentimes it takes them 18 months to get into the 70s. Okay. Nobody gets to the 90s. Nobody. And Tesla's OEE standard, that is acceptable level, 90%. All right. Let's continue with the piece here. What that means, um, the OEE really evaluates um, the equipment uptime, the um, machine performance, and the quality. Simply put, um, this is the um, actual um, production time on a good quality product versus the planned productive time. Uh, the higher, the better. Um, the 45 second cycle time, that means you, know, you expect every 45 seconds there's a car running off the final assembly line uh, in the factory. Um, and the faster we rent, um, the faster we can get the economy of scale. Um, if you look at um, the chart on the, right, uh, on the left, um, Shanghai um, be able to significantly drop our labor hours per car. Josh, go ahead and share that, 
that chart while we play this? Um, during the ramp, um, the little dip there has happened in the last um, Q2 2022 um, because of the, the COVID shutdown. Um, and on the right is the Fremont um, Model Y shop. Even this is a six year old facility, the team there still be able to optimize the material flow, eliminate all the um, single point of a failure, and to drive higher outputs, um, hence uh, reduce the labor hours. Um, and actually, this factory keep setting a new record. Um, yesterday, they just had a new factory daily record. Congrats, Fremont team. <laughs> All right, real quick. So keep that chart up, Josh, okay? And I'm going to bring Kutsai in here. Number one, it's not possible for Tesla to do what they've done here. I, so they're doing two things. On the left, the chart on the left-hand side is showing Shanghai's output. There are two, there's two numbers uh, on here. Number one is the light gray line is their labor hours, and the, and the blue line is their output. So labor hours continue to go down, and their output continues to go up. There was a big initiative in the second quarter of 2022 to drive these efficiency improvements. But doing that drive required that A, they were a fully digital company. That means everything was connected together. They were acquiring the data so that they could calculate the KPIs accurately and in real time so that they could drive these efficiency improvements. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and if you, for anyone listening on the podcast, you'll, you, you, what you can't see is the model uh, Y output at Shanghai. They're able to produce more cars with less labor hours than the Fremont factory is able to do. So like, yeah, they're able to do more with less on the second gen factory. Imagine the third gen factory. There's another piece in here that's hard for people to understand. And that is this earlier on in the presentation. So most people, if you looked at the media, the way they talked about Tesla's investor day, they were like, oh, Tesla's lost all their great ideas. You know, there was a big letdown. Bullshit. There were three major announcements in there that should scare the shit out of every automotive manufacturer on the planet. Number one, Tesla goes from bare ground to operating Gigafactory in 9.5 months. Z bare ground to operating facility in 9.5 months. Number two, once they're up, once they've ramped up so that they, what they have, they have sustainable production and then they decide to do their secondary ramp where they improve efficiency, increase output and lower labor costs, they are unmatched on the planet, not just in automotive, but in all of industry. And it's not even close and it's not even remotely achievable unless you are a full stack digital company. Part of the reason you, you can't achieve these types of gains without being able to scale data acquisition, storage, analysis, and transformation into information. And products like HiveMQ, technology like MQTT makes all of that possible at scale. That's the big thing. But Kutsai, your when you hear that piece, when you hear Tom Zhu talk about that, what is your reaction? And I know MES is not your... Like you're not a, you're 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 a hardware guy and then you're a topology guy at the, at the top end, but what is your reaction to that video? Yeah, so I mean, first of all, for me, like for for any system, really, for any system that uh, operates at ninety percent efficiency, regardless, it's an MES system or an energy conversion system. That's like really operating at maximum capacity because in most right. cases it's impossible to get to a hundred. So those are unavoidable losses. So it's safe to say that Tesla is running at hundred percent capacity as it is right now. Right. Yeah. Which is mind boggling for me. And also kind of like um, uh, comparing it with the figure that you said at 30%, because I was about to ask what, what, what's the normal operating range for OEE. And you compare it with 30%, that is like really mind. Uh, Wait, most, companies, most companies, most companies, when they get to 50% OEE, and for those of you, um, there's two numbers. There's a big discussion on LinkedIn right now. I, I can't remember the guy's name who said, OEE is not the number you should worry about. You should worry about the, the sub KPIs, availability, quality, performance, and then you should really focus on asset utilization. My response to that is that's not true. OEE and TEEP are 
two numbers that are very, very valuable, the higher you get up in the organization. And, and availability, quality, performance, and asset utilization, those are numbers that are more and more valuable as you get down lower in the organization. I, if I work on the plant floor, I don't care about the OE number. If, if I work in maintenance, I really only care about the availability number. And if I work in operations, I only care about performance. And if I work in quality or engineering, I care about the quality number, right? So the closer you get to the plant floor, the more you care about the sub KPI, okay? But there's another number and that's TEEP. OEE is how well do we perform when we're scheduled to perform? TEEP is how well are we performing relative to how well we could perform if we were operating at 100% capacity. We ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week, minus all of our minimum um, downtime for like shutdowns and stuff. The reason I bring this up is Tesla is a fully digital company. They're not a car company. They're a data company that makes cars. And in order to be a data company, you got to be fully digital. In order to be fully digital, you have to have an infrastructure that scales because so many things happen all day long. So many changes are made in an organization that if you, if you had to manually connect every change to your infrastructure, you would never be able to keep up. And Tesla doesn't operate that way. You know, Tesla does not. Is, uh, is Elon Musk the 21st century Henry Ford? No, Henry Ford is the 15th century Elon Musk. Yeah. Not, not even the 20th century Elon Musk. He's the 15th century Elon Musk. I want to add in something. Remember yeah. we were talking about, so it's relative to investor day and like I totally forgot, but it just dawned on me. And I was like, you know how you're, we're talking about unified namespace and all data information is available to all consumers within the organization. Yep. And we knew Tesla was doing that, but in the investor day under the financials uh, section, they they literally show like, hey, Tesla has their own operating system. Uh, I don't know if I could let me share my screen real quick. I want to um, shit, hold on. <laughs> All right, look, this is this is where they it's later in the presentation, but and they talked about scaling SGNA. Like, hey, when you're selling vehicles, how do they keep their operating leverage so you know profitable through their Tesla operating system, right? So here's the Tesla operating system, factory, warehousing, services, customer information, mobile app, finance, human resources, recruiting, data analysis. Yeah, guess, data. What's, guess what's underneath that? So if you see the square on the outside of those, those, there's nine slides there. Imagine those nine elements were sitting on a piece of paper. Do you know what's on that piece of paper? A unified namespace built, edge-driven, report by exception, lightweight. That's so, how they're able to transform their whole company. That's exactly it. And now we have actual acknowledgement from tesla publicly and everyone's like there's no announcements in here it's like look, i'm like look at what they're doing you <laughs> what can't, other company has created their own software program for you know every other company is buying this off the shelf and trying to integrate it you know with contractors tesla's doing this all in-house from building to design and manufacturing everything 